I would like to uh, introduce everybody to this important and interesting webinar. And it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Professor Francesca Malamacci, who's chief of the Department of Nephrology, Dialysis and Renal Transplantation, and also head of the Hypertension Research Unit in Reggio Calabria, Italy. She's also chairwoman of the Eureka M Working Group of the ERA, and a highly renowned scientist and lead of the EXCITE trial. The topic of Professor Malamachi's talk is physical activity in CKD patients, time to overcome nephrologist inertia. We also have two panelists, and I would like to introduce them. Professor Yolanta Malisco, who's head of the Department of Nephrology, Dialysis and Internal Medicine, at the Medical University in Warsaw, Poland, and Professor Robert Eckert, who is head of the Department of Dialysis at the University Medical Center in Maribor, Slovenia. I would just like to tell you all who have come uh, that by participating live, you will earn one European credit for continuous medical education. And this is an exclusive benefit for ERA members. Now I would like to uh, give the floor or the screen to uh, Francesca, please. Thank you, Naomi, for uh, the, this kind presentation. So, a chronic kidney disease uh, is uh, uh, one of the most worrying uh, chronic diseases, and uh, uh, it's a uh, it, uh, it causes not only osteoporosis, degenerative joint disease, loss of neuromuscular strength, but also Alzheimer's disease, dementia, depression, atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. So the lack of physical activity gives all these complications. And uh, although physical activity is considered to be fundamental in the prevention and treatment of chronic diseases, and CKD is a public health issue, physical exercise has been so far very seldom prescribed to CKD patients. Uh, moreover, the, the evidentiary basis for recommending exercise training in CKD uh, patients is still limited. And even when and how exercise training should be articulated, intradialis, off dialysis, in center, and so on, still remains an open problem. There are, in CKD, not in dialysis, there are, not, there are no trials. And uh, in hemodialysis, there are 55 trials, but they are all small single central studies and uh, of duration restricted to based on supervised exercise during the dialysis session or in centers. So one of the problems which we could see uh, are that uh, 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 organizing uh, exercise during the dialysis session is not so easy. And uh, no trial testing home-based physical exercise pro programs are so available, at least uh, not so many. And uh, home-based programs uh, would be important in the elderly and important also for patients' empowerment. So the question that uh, in my presentation, I focus on the largest trial that uh, so far we have in CKD dialysis patients. And I'll speak about it in, in a moment. And the question we had in our mind was, are low intensity home-based physical exercise of be any benefit on physical performance, quality of life, and outcomes in dialysis patients? 
this was the excite and one of the, the first paper we published was in Jason. The excite is an acronym for uh, exercise introduction to enhanced performance in dialysis. Excite. This it was funded by the Italian Ministry of Health. The methodology team was in my city, Reggio Calabria, while the physical rehabilitation coordinating team was in Ferrara. This was a multi center Italian uh, trial. And the aim was to assess the clinical value of a six month uh, simple personalized home basic training uh, period delivered by the dialysis staff in dialysis patients. The exclusion criteria were physical limitation, very important, the light amputation and uh, any other limitation to the ambulation and clinical limitations such as severe effort angina, stage four, the uh, New York classification, any intercurrent illness requiring hospitalization, and also a high degree of fitness. Participants were randomly uh, assigned to two arms. The one arm of the personalized training program and another arm, uh, another control, no training arm. The, the, pro, the, the trial, the active trial, uh, lasted six months. At the baseline, uh, physical performance, uh, quality of life, standard clini clinical parameters were performed, and they were repeated at six months and at 18 months and 36 months. There was also an ob observation period of 36 months when the clinical outcomes were collected. Now, the, which were the performance tests we applied? Were the six minute walking distance and the sit to stand to sit test. The six minute walking distance was, uh, was the, uh, the patient walked back and forth along a 22 meters course in a corridor as quickly as possible for six minutes. While the sit to stand to sit test was the time taken by the patient to stand up and sit repeated this, this five times. The primary analysis was the major clinical endpoints was to assess uh, whether a six month home based training intervention improves physical performance as measured by the working test and the, the sit to stand test and the quality of life. You can see here the, what we used for the quality of life. The secondary outcomes were death, hospitalizations, and the safety during the six months of the trial. Death and hospitalizations up to 36 months. Now, the source population was composed by more than 700 dialysis patients. But you can see here, for many reasons that, that, that are put, uh, here listed, uh, 296 patients were at the end randomized, 151 in the active group, the exercise group, and 145 in the control group. At six months, 18 months, and 36 months, you see here the figures. And at 36 months, we had 47 patients in the active arm and 41 in the control arm to be analyzed. As you can appreciate here, the randomization of patients worked very well. 
and at the baseline, they were all comparable. Now, the, six, the results of the six minutes working test. Uh, at the baseline, they were comparable, but in the control arm, nothing happened, happened during the, the time, six months, 18 months, and 36 months, while in the active arm, the exercise arm, the performance uh, improved a lot and significantly. Patients were able to perform 40 meters or more than at baseline in the active arm of the study. What about the second performance test, the six for standard to see? No, um, but no big variations, and, uh, no variation, no, uh, the, the groups were comparable at baseline, as you can appreciate here, no, no statistical significant difference between the baselines. Nothing happened during, during the uh, observation time and the six month trial. While in the active arm, again, we had an improvement of the performance test. That means that the patients were uh, more quick, were quicker to perform the sit to stand to sit test, as you can appreciate from this bar. These results in a pretty large cohort of the young patients indicate that some type of the physical activity is beneficial in the performance of this high risk population. As I said, we performed, we uh, delivered also the um, questionnaire for the quality of life. And we tested the 19 dimensions. The dimensions that were significant were cognitive, cognitive function and the quality of the social interaction. You can see here that the cognitive function is a broad term defined as the, an intellectual process by which one becomes aware of, perceives or comprehends ideas. It involves all aspects of perception thinking, reasoning, and remembering. And you can see here that in the cognitive function, this is a very important uh, function, in the active arm improved a bit. But what is important to underline is the control arm, the, 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 group, with, uh, the, the group of patients without any physical activity, Worsened. And the same was true for the quality of the social interaction, a slight improvement in the active arm, but a, a real worsening in the control arm. Now, the secondary outcomes death, hospitalization, and the safety during the six months of the trial and the death and the hospitalizations up to 36 months. Safety and the tolerability were, was good because all cause death was three cases we had in the control arm and the two cases in the active arm. And you can read here also the, uh, the symptoms patients had, not very important. And overall, the exercise program was well tolerated. And during the whole trial, the rehabilitation team received a few fine uh, phone calls for consultation about the symptoms during exercise by the participating centers. The secondary outcome analysis. You can see here the intention to treat analysis during the six month period. There were not, there was not, a, there were not differences between the two arms, but in a per protocol analysis, you can appreciate here that there was a difference between the active arm and the control arm that was uh, statistically significant. These were the hospitalizations only 
because we didn't have a debt during the six month training period. So the incidence rate of hospitalization was about 40% lower in patients in the active arm of the trial than in those in the control arm. Another paper, very recent paper, uh, was published by our group in CJSON in 2022, August 2022. And here you can appreciate the hospitalization and the death during the 36 month. You can see here of observation after the, the end of the active part of the trial. And you can see here that there was a, a slight difference between the control group and the exercise group as far as uh, is concerned the hospitalization and the death. This difference was even better, uh, higher, when we compared the groups uh, according to the adherence to the, uh, to the, the compliance to the, uh, to the exercise. And you can, you can see here that the high adherence group had a better, um, a better um, uh, trend than the low adherence group and the control group. So we, we could conclude that a simple, personalized, home-based, low-intensity exercise program was associated in long term to a lower risk of hospitalization and death in, the, in dialysis patients. But you can ask me, this is in the whole dialysis population of this trial. But what happened to patients very old, not very old, well, uh, older than 60 year, 65 years? And uh, we had in our cohort 160 patients who were older than 65, 83 were uh, in the exercise group and 77 in the control group. At six months, there were 53 and 62 respectively. You can see here that also elderly patients had an improvement in the performance of the six minute walking test, as you can appreciate from this uh, slide. And uh, the same uh, holds true for the five time sit to stand test. You can see here that the patient this, uh, uh, these patients older than 65 um, improved their performance after the six month trial. These results indicate that physical activity is beneficial also in elderly dialysis patients. But uh, this is just um, a systematic review of uh, observational studies. And you can appreciate here that the, in, this, uh, uh, in this observational studies, because there were no big trials about that, the uh, physical activity was beneficial in, uh, in these patients. The present systematic review finds evidence of a dose response reduction in all cause mortality, so a hard outcome associated with the increased physical activity in end stage kidney disease patients. Now, the question is the guidelines, what to say about the physical activity? These are recommendations by the CDO 2021 about uh, low salt diet. But what about the regular physical activity? The recommendation is not so strong. And uh, if you read carefully this note, the, the, um, this recommendation is limited to patients with high blood pressure and the CKD, but not for all patients. The question is, do nephrologists prescribe physical activity to CKD patients or is there still inertia? 
our moderator, Naomi Klein, uh, published a very nice review in CKJ. And what she tried to understand were, was uh, 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 the barrier that uh, uh, these patients have in uh, uh, performing uh, physical activity. And uh, Naomi found that uh, the lack of support from a nephrologist and the nursing staff were the second in this uh, rank, the second in uh, uh, as a barrier for uh, uh, physical activity in these patients. And uh, as motivators and facilitators, again, the support from the nephrologists and the nursing staff was second in this rank. There were exercise prescription by exercise physiologists, high level of disease acceptance, high degree of self-care, and so on. And also transplant candidacy. So it means that if the patients are motivated, they perform physical activity. But Naomi went beyond. And with her working group, they launched in Europe a survey. This is our very preliminary data, and they are limited to an Italian, the Italian part of this survey. You can see here that uh, um, the uh, eight uh, centers, eight uh, Italian nephrology centers were randomized. And uh, the response, no, 10 were randomized, and the response was from eight. The number of nephrologists who replied was 84. And uh, you can see here that they responded, they replied that the physical activity prescription was 77%, 77%. It means that 77% of nephrologists say that they prescribe physical activity, while just 21% sometimes or rarely. Nobody said, I don't prescribe any physical activity, zero. So this very preliminary data seem to suggest that the inertia of a nephrologist, at least in this Italian part of the survey, is going to be overcome. So to summarize and conclude, the EXCITE trial shows that a simple home-based exercise program safely improves physical capacity and the two relevant items in kidney disease component of quality of life in dialysis patients. Even in the elderly segment of this patient population, there was an improvement in performance tests in the active arm. At six months in a per protocol analysis, the hospitalization rate was lower in the active group than in the control group. At the 36 months, the rate of hospitalization death, it was a composite outcome, was lower in patients in the active group than in those in the control group. This finding suggests that the physical activity may underlie an important improvement in the risk of hospitalization and death in dialysis patients. In recent years, very preliminary data seem to suggest that the inertia of a nephrologist is going to be overcome. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, Francesca, for an excellent presentation of a very interesting and important EXCITE study and uh, a positive, optimistic view of the future. <laughs> uh, I would like to open uh, now to our panelists and would like to ask uh, your lab professor Marisco uh, to comment. Um, first of all, Francesca, um, I'm impressed about the, all the results and first of all about the idea to put the trial um, in real life. 
because well um the guidelines are the guidelines and the real world is a little bit different so you are trying to do the i would say the excellent job to convince patients to do something for themselves um i'm i do agree that um like um naomi told in well wrote in her um review article that there are some barriers and the limitations and the probably um the fault is in us as well i mean as a nephrologist um that's why i think that um if we do start to tell more and more about the benefits or the positive classes or the positive sides of physical therapy um and also when we do get do give our own example so it will we will be able to overcome more and more patients of course we have to admit that um not every patient is suitable for exercise because sometimes we have really sick patients bedridden on the wheelchairs so that's another one issue however um it seems to me that uh in university centers in the public units when also we do have the um, help from the physical therapists and also from these medical students or other healthcare professionals like for instance uh, students who are doing the degree in rehabilitation physical therapy etc they also might be of a great help during their study and during their clinical practice which is not the case in general in, well, let's say non-public sector. Uh, so this is what um, I would say the excellent idea to put into the perspective and try to convince, first of all, ourselves and also to show our own examples. Okay, when we're talking with the patients, let's let's say, okay, I'm walking to work, I'm going for a walk, I'm, I'm going with my dog or I'm doing shopping, not just taking my car and driving everywhere. I can, but to do something uh, for ourselves. So it makes uh, us more um, uh, honest and also it makes us more, I would say, um, where we can have the more power to convince someone else. So that's, that's my feeling. So thank you so much for bringing up this particular uh i would say neglected neglected problem in uh in nephrology yes you are right uh, yolanda um, this is a neglected field in nephrology but uh, i think that uh, you see when i started this study this trial I, I am a very lazy person, I must say. But when I started the trial, I started also to go to the uh, gym, just uh, to have the to have the face to tell patients you should uh, do some physical activity. And I started first. <laughs> so motivation is very important. Uh, this is what I mean. So it's exactly like in the Latin, verba docent exempla trahunt. So it's it's from well, it's not Italian; it's old Latin. Thank you. Um, there's always a chance to get back, but I think we will ask uh, Professor Eckert Robert if you'd like to give some comments. Hello to everybody. Yes, congratulations to Professor Malamachi for and co-workers for excellent study. And the results of this study uh, are impressive from my point of view. Um, I think that the role of exercise in chronic kidney patients is uh, really very often overlooked by our nephrologist. And uh, my person, my personal view is I also don't. Um, uh, don't say every every day to my patients that they have to exercise at home and uh, another question uh, another question is from my from my point of view how to convince the patients and how to check them how many times they exercise at home uh, do we have any method any any measurement how to uh, you 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 take these meters. I, I, I saw you take these meters to, to uh, 
to go. But uh, my question is also if we could use maybe by impedance, uh, which which give us the data about the muscle mass, about the adipositive mass, about the uh, hydration uh, status, uh, and with this bioimpedance to check if uh, our patients are really, uh, they are really something exercised at home. If what, what is your opinion? Do you mean it's maybe this possible? Because this is very, very simple method. Uh, uh, or to use pedometer, Everybody for uh, from uh, us have uh, iPhone or phone in the in the um, at by site, and um, we can also look to to this data. How many uh, how many um, how, what distance everybody uh, make every day? I don't know. What's your opinion about this, uh, Robert? Uh, the in the in the trial. Uh, we had the, the, the pedometer had a battery and we, com we checked the yes. battery. So we, we knew that they made, uh, did exercise. Uh, but another important point that I want to underline is the improvement in performance. So if they had such an improvement in the performance tests, they did the exercise. There is no, no point. Uh, but anyway, we checked also the batteries. For, uh, I read your fire. paper. Yes, yes, uh, I remember. Yes. So for the trial, but for the, the everyday life, I think that, uh, uh, well, if the staff, the for dialysis patients, for CKD is uh, different. And uh, I can. Uh, uh, tell you that we are going to start a trial in CKD, not in dialysis, that uh, I think is, uh, that will be more difficult than the, the trial in uh, dialysis patients. But we are going to start in a few months uh, the, another Excite2 <laughs> trial. Uh, so. uh, yes, yes. And uh, um, the point is that maybe the only, the only studies that we have, most of them are observational with a few, uh, the patients are uh, in a low number and so on in uh, dialysis patients. But maybe because as, they, as I said in, uh, previously, uh, maybe because organizing, uh, organizing the exercise during the dialysis session as it was until uh, a few years ago, it's extremely difficult because when the patient is, uh, uh, is, um, is on, on dialysis, it's difficult to, 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 uh, to, to, be, to be very active, to have exercise for many reasons, practical, practical reasons. While the home-based, this idea was really good, I think that the patient can perform exercise at home. Maybe this is the key to convince people to do some physical activity. Any more comments? I agree with you totally. I think, in fact, many people who ask do prefer to do the exercise at home. Uh, and um, I would just like you to share with us, with our, our uh, members uh, who are part of the webinar, what type of exercise you, you prescribed. Uh, well, uh, Naomi, what we prescribe is uh, the two performance tests that I illustrated. But uh, for very lazy people, we say just have a half hour walking every day, almost three times a week. Also, this, this uh, recommendation, I think it's good because if people walk for 30 minutes a day or three times a week, is still important and uh, it could be enough 
just uh, uh, it would be enough if they have a, a, fam a family, uh, if they have familiar support or someone who uh, helps them to do that. Just working, just working mm -hmm. and not staying in the sofa watching television. I think this is part of the success of your child, the simplicity of it and made it, making it very easy for patients actually to, to comply. Um, uh, Naomi, sometimes I say to, to patients, if you don't want to go uh, outside because you don't have, the, you don't feel like that, just if you have a corridor in your uh, flat, your, but just do it. Uh, half an hour, 15 minutes, two, ta two times a day, but, but do something. That sounds like excellent advice, and obviously very successful advice. <laughs> um, I think I would like to ask our uh, members of the webinar, and we have some questions here, and I will choose uh, one. Um, and one question is, what is the best way to motivate nephrologists around the world to promote physical activity in their patients? And they also felt in their staff, I don't know if that's our job to promote exercise in our staff, but let's stay with the patients. Would you like to give us, answer that question? Uh, so, uh, sorry. Uh, what is the best way to motivate nephrologists? To motivate the nephrologists yeah. to promote physical activity in their patients. How, how do you motivate them? Well, I think that the first is to speak in our community, in our scientific community about the problem and, and um, showing the results we have that are documented, they are published in very good uh, journals, high impact journals. So this is, could be a motivation for nephrologists. And uh, uh, second, I think that we should, in a way, convince for the next uh, um, guidelines, guidelines to, be, uh, to put a, a stronger recommendation than uh, it is uh, now. Because, uh, because if, we, if we have a trial with uh, something like 300, dialysis patients with this result. I think that uh, can't be, um, the, the, this, uh, these results can't be uh, overlooked. So in, if the guide, if the guidelines say, please, you have to prescribe some, ta some kind of physical activity to your patients, I think this is a, this mm -hmm. is a good way to implement the well, to, to, to convince nephrologists to do something more. I agree. I think it's very, very important to start to that we have enough research now to be able to uh, create reasonably strong evidence uh, and create yeah. guidelines. Yeah. So yeah. I think so. And I think that's a very important next step that we need to do in our community. Yeah. I have another question from the, uh, the participants. Uh, and this is, what is a standard job prescription for a renal physiotherapist? <laughs> well, well we, we had the, the luck. Um, we have been very lucky because the, uh, the rehabilitation team in Ferrara was very good. So, they prescribe the personalized exercise, but you see, in everyday life, it's not possible. So as I said earlier on, maybe just starting with the, uh, 30 minutes walking, walk, and uh, recommend also the seat to stand uh, because it's good for, uh, the, for, for the legs, for the muscular apparatus. Uh, I think that uh, uh, so far there, there are no um, standard prescriptions, but this uh, very simple prescription, the, the walking and the, the sit to stand, 
is, uh, could be enough, or at least are better than nothing. Do you have anything, do any other panelists like to comment on this? You, will, you mentioned this a bit in your, your comments. Do you have anything else you'd like to, to um, add? Naomi and Francesca, Robert, um, I think that at the very first moment, we uh, need to convince the patient to do something. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's be the, the very, very simplest thing, like uh, take out of the sofa and do something for yourself. <laughs> yes. Okay, walk to the kitchen, prepare by yourself your food, go for a small shopping, go with your dog or just have a dog to have an opportunity or the duty to go with, with a dog for a walk. Just start from the scratch and finally add on. And also what is really um, for me important that uh, it should be tailored to the patient's um, abilities. Because if you put the uh, limits high, no one will do like that. Because it can, it can be done for one day or two, but it should be done for in a long-term run. So that's why I think it's, it should be more uh, evolutionary than revolutionary way. So start from the scratch, add on, and always compliment. Always say something positive, um, just to encourage people to do more and a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And always try to consider all the multimorbidities multi and if it's possible also to talk to their relatives, to their family, to their um, close friends, um, to... Um, explain why the physical activity is important. Not only the healthy diet, let's put in this way, not only the healthy lifestyle, but also including some physical activity. Because while well, the people are doing different things when they are young, like some of them, they do swimming, walking, um, running, cycling, etc. So uh, if we are getting older and older, um, and this is the reality nowadays, as soon as like 65 or 70 plus in the, the, the majority of the patients, um, we try to find um, the best possible way for some kind of physical exercise. So for me, it's like that's going for a small shopping to start from something. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the fact that we observed, that we documented, that also people older than 65 have a beneficial effect on their performance with these very simple exercises. I think it's very good. This may be so the, the result that is uh, more gratifying for, uh, for a doctor that even elderly can do something better. And we, now we have a very old patients in, uh, in our dialysis unit. And also in our CKD, not to dialysis patients, they are old. They are, the, the, the mean is 65, but they are 70, 75, 80. So there, we have some patients 90. So we, the, 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 our aim should be to, to encourage them to do something, mm -hmm. just better than nothing. Also to, to have a, a walk in the corridor of a day home, just this. And for me, Francesca, really age is not a limit. It's just a matter of how you feel and what's your biological age. Because sometimes yes, yes. at the age of 60, uh, we are, are like um, elderly, like 80 plus. But sometimes it's in completely on the opposite. So, yes. so that's why I think that the family support is also of a crucial importance. If it's only possible, we should encourage the family also to, uh, to, to say and to stimulate, to be yes. engaged and to try to find a way how to, how to persuade to do something. But in fact, Not in, the, in, the, in the review uh, published by Naomi in the CKJ, the first uh, barrier and the first facilitator were the support, not support or support from the family. So uh, the first one, and then the second was about the nephrologists and the staff 
but the first one was a family. Family. Barrier if they are not supported and facilitator if they are supported. I liked very much that uh, review, Naomi. Thank it was you. very, very nice, very good. I have some more questions from the, the uh, audience. Uh, one uh, says that thank you for the amazing presentation. What types of exercise did you describe? And you have answered that question. It was walking mainly. And then we have one, another question here. Uh, in daily practice, encouraging patients to exercise is simple, but prescribing exercise in patients with end stage kidney disease is a rather complex task. And that nephrologists perceive it as risky. So, um, he believes that exercise prescription should be a matter not only for the nephrologist or it's you need a team including a cardiologist sport medicine professional and also a physiotherapist and i would just like to also comment on that earlier question on what job description of renal physiotherapist should have i think most units do not have renal physiotherapists. I think the first stage is to actually work towards having a renal physiotherapist, as Professor Cook, uh, Damis, uh, Damasco here suggests, because I think we need them. It's, um, it creates a, a sense of security in our patients, uh, and I don't think that job description needs to be so different from, from other physiothera cardiac physiotherapists. Um, but I think one thing is very important, which is also in your article and was in our article, was in our study too, is that it's important that somebody follows what the patient has done. And you also mentioned this, Robert, how to follow that there's compliance. And I think just by asking the patient, that's very important. Um, in your study, the nurses asked, did you exercise? Have you exercised? Uh, they're tested regularly, which is a job for the physiotherapist, therapist if possible. So, and that the nephrologist shows interest. We ask whether they took their phosphate binders. Probably we should ask whether they, they exercised. Uh, so I think that's very important. Uh, and also to specialize this job, I think is important. Uh, and then we have a comment here from uh, Hale Maria said she'd like to emphasize that in the clinic for hemodialysis in Sarajevo, they just established exercise during dialysis 10 years ago, and they still have many, many patients uh, exercising. And here's from Barbara Cancio Castellano. Um, in my opinion, it's very important to define body composition of sarcopenia in chronic kidney disease patients. Is it? Do you consider necessary the existence of multidisciplinary teams to prescribe physical exercise? Um, what do you think? Can we say that this is answered, that we do think so? <laughs> no, I, I didn't understand. I didn't understand what you said. The prescription by multidisciplinary, they, they wondered whether this person wonders whether a multidisciplinary team is necessary. I guess basically a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist would be helpful. Well, of course, if uh, if we, I, I think that it's uh, almost impossible uh, that all dialysis centers have a spectacular team like we had for the trial, for the trial, the the, over the, the rehabilitation team. It's. Um, it maybe it's a dream, but it's not reality. So I agree that uh, the rehabilitation team is, uh, for sure, is the most, uh, the ideal way to prescribe exercise, physical activity to patients. But in everyday life, we don't have a rehabilitation team with us. So uh, just to be realistic, I think that uh, it's better if we prescribe some kind of a physical activity, just, uh, and we have to, to say to the patient, please, you don't have to feel tired. You have just to, to do some, some motion, some, you, you should move, but without feeling tired. 
I think that this is uh, what we can say in the real world, as you said <laughs> earlier on. Uh, we don't have uh, in uh, everyday life uh, rehabilitation team, physiotherapists, and so on. So we have to start, and then we will see. I don't know if I if I answered properly, Naomi. I I have not received a, another question from the audience, so I think you probably have. Thank you. <laughs> I would also like to ask you, uh, uh, Francesca, uh, it's one concern that many people have had is that exercise could harm patients. But did you find any harmful effects from your exercise prescription? Uh, sorry, I, uh, I uh, did, you, did you find any harm in your patients from doing the exercise that you prescribe? Not at all, not no. at all. I showed that uh, the trial was uh, really safe. And uh, I showed that during the six month period of active training, we had uh, three um, deaths in the control arm and the two in the active arm of the study. This is uh, the, the simplest way to say that exercise, at least in this trial, was truly safe. And I think that's a tremendously important uh, take home message that it's feasible because you had high compliance and a lot of people had high adherence and that it's very safe. Uh, nobody came to harm. Everybody was able to do it and they managed to do it for six months. So there was good duration. They were able to continue. And it also, I think, a very important word here is in your in the beginning, you, you, you said that they were each given a personalized exercise prescription. And I think that's also a key uh, to success. But as you said, well, I think you all have said that too, that you don't ask people to run who can barely walk. It has to be adapted to their ability and then it will be safe and also possible to do. And this is how you prescribe, how you you uh, designed the trial, and I think this is very important to the success and to translate it into everyday clinical practice. Yes. I, I can add something more. The, the exercise in this trial had also, we published another paper about that, a legacy effect. It means that after the end of the active part of the trial, that was six months, uh, we observed, um, uh, uh, we, we documented that the, performing, the performance test remained good after 18 months. After 18 months, the leader's effect was uh, missed but 18 months after the end of exercise. This could mean also that uh, patients continue after the trial, the active part of the trial, they continued to, to, to do some uh, physical activity. This could be also an explanation for this uh, uh, effect. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think we have any more questions from the audience. Um, and I don't know if any of the panelists have any more comments they'd like to give. And if I may add just a few words concerning the dialysis population, I mean the hemodialysis population. Um, uh, Fr Francesca, you told, I would say, ideally, there's a personalized prescription. But if you are doctors working in the dialysis unit and we do know our patients, we also do know that of some, I would say, burdens of obstacles or limitations, because some of the patients, they do not feel well at the day of dialysis. So, well, it's obvious as well that they will do almost nothing at this particular day and they will start the next day. So for um, very, very, I would say, uh, basic uh, part, uh, we try to figure out what will be the, um, the start for our patients. And also it's, I would say the huge responsibility, not only for us, but 
uh, in many dialysis units, we can learn a lot of our nurse, a lot from our nurses, because they do know patients more than we are, because they know about their problems, about their habits, about the social situation, about their life, etc. So this is like a the multidisciplinary team in the real world, not the ideal world. It's generally nurses and doctors. Yes, yes. because we are dealing much more with the, all the prescriptions. But they are dealing also with this uh, different part. I mean, the personal part, social part, emotional part. Yes. So that's why I guess it's the, the utmost importance is of our collaboration with the nurses, trying to find the best way. I totally agree with you. This is very, very important to have a multi-professional uh, group team to take care of the patients because none of us can do it on our own. It's far too complicated. And uh, I also think that this is, this is very important. We actually have a gym adjacent to our um, dialysis unit in Lund with a physiotherapist in it. So all the patients, before they go to dialysis, they are pulled into the gym and they love doing it before dialysis, but this is how we built it. I also think it's very important to start early and through KD three, four, and five before they start dialysis to get them used to it. And we also have very good, good results there. So all in all, we have to say that exercise is medicine and it should be treated as such. It needs to be prescribed, it needs to be personalized, and it needs to be followed up by testing and asking the patients how their compliance is, just as we would prescribe any important medication because this is a medication that you have shown, uh, Francesca, actually affects people's lives and uh, risk of becoming even ill or having other diseases and going to hospital. So it's a very powerful medication, I think you've shown. And with these words, I think we will conclude this session. And I'd like to thank all the audience for listening and giving us some interesting questions and a good discussion. I'd like to thank you panelists for your interesting comments and Francesca for a wonderful talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you too.